So historically, if we wanted to debounce a timer in JavaScript, we would use the set timeout call and record the return value, which is a timeout ID. So we would do something like timer equals set timeout my callback, and we would give it a delay, so let's say a thousand milliseconds. And then if we ever needed to do this again, what we would do first is call clear timeout and pass in that recorded timer before we would then call the set timeout again and, uh, and override that timer value. So essentially, every time we go to set the timeout, we clear the previous timeout and then record the timeout ID of the set timeout call. And this works great. But after playing around with the abort controller the other week with uh, fetch calls as a, as a way to cancel the fetch calls using the abort signal, it got me thinking about what else I could cancel with an abort controller, and it got me thinking about set timeout. So what I wanted to do was quickly explore the use of abort controller as a means to uh, proxy this timer set timeout clear timeout dance and allow a timer to be canceled using an abort controller. So let's jump over into my demo. And I have a simple button, and what I'm going to do is attach a click handler to this button. And uh, when you click on the button, I'm going to set a timeout for a thousand milliseconds or, or one second, and then I'm just going to log something to the console. And if you click this button multiple times within that 1000 millisecond window, I'm going to cancel the previous timer and then start the new timer. So essentially, we're going to debounce the callback from our click handler to a thousand millisecond window. And the way we're going to do that is instead of recording that timeout ID, we're going to use abort controller. So again, if we just look back here, our dance is we get the timer, we clear the timer, we then reset the timer. That's the debouncing workflow. And we're going to do the exact same thing, except we're going to use abort controller instead. So we have our timer ID, so to speak. We need to kick off a click handler. We're going to clear the timer. In this case, we're going to abort the uh, abort controller. Then we're going to set up a new timer. And instead of using a return value from a set timeout, we're going to take this abort controller and we're going to pass the signal into our set timeout function proxy. Set timeout doesn't accept a signal, an abort signal. So we're going to have to create our own proxy function, set abortable timeout that takes as one of the arguments a signal. And then our calling of abort will trigger the abort event on this signal. And then internally, this proxy function will cancel the underlying timer. So uh, let's just quickly look at how this works. Um, the the uh, callback here just logs something to the console. And then if we just quickly look at the set abort timeout, we will go through the details in a second, but you can see that it then cancels, it, it logs. If its abort event is, is triggered, it logs this to the, to the console. All right, so let's jump into the browser and just again, take a quick look. So we click, wait a second, and you can see our timer is executed. Let's try that again. Click, wait a second, timer is executed. Now let's try clicking it multiple times in a row. Blah, 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 blah. And you can see we clicked on it five times, but we didn't get five timer executions. Instead, each previous pending timer was canceled. And here you can see the logging from our set abortable timeout proxy method. And then ultimately only our last set timeout call ever gets the chance to execute. So we only get one value. Now what you'll notice is that um, if I click it twice, right, we get one cancel call because the first one was canceled then the second one was allowed to execute. However, if the callback has executed and I click the button, notice that we don't get any warning about a previous timer being canceled. And that's because our set abortable timeout proxy function is smart enough to unbind its internal listener once the callback has been invoked. So we don't get any errant uh, logging or logic around the abort signal. All right, so let's take a look now at the low level details. So again, we have our abort controller, we're passing the signal for that abort controller into the timeout and then that gives us the ability to call abort on it before the timeout window has been uh, uh, passed. Now, let's get into the low-level awesomeness. So set abortable timeout, it takes our callback, it takes our delay, this is what we would expect to see in a set timeout call, and then now it takes an additional argument, uh, the signal, the abort signal instance. The abort signal instance 
is kind of a pub sub, a publish and subscribe mechanism that does nothing but emit a single event, abort, and it will only ever emit that event once. Once uh, an abort signal has been aborted, uh, calling abort on it, again, is essentially a no-op. It won't re-emit the abort event. So it's basically a one-time only event. So internally, we're going to create our proxy callback. And the reason we want to create a proxy callback instead of just passing the callback instance around is because internally, once the callback executes, we want to remove our own event listener from the abort signal. That way, if we uh, if the window passes and then we trigger another timer, we don't end up getting this console logging. You can see here, if we cancel this, if we comment this out, and let's go back into the browser and refresh, we click, we allow it to go. Now, if I click again, you'll see that we got a cancel timeout, but we didn't have to cancel anything because the previous timer had already fully been invoked. So that's why if we put this back in, when the internal callback is executed, we remove the binding. And, and now, if we refresh, we do click me, we allow it to execute. If we do click me again, we don't get that console logging about it being canceled. All right, so we have our internal callback that unbinds the abort handle, uh, the abort event, but then we also attach the abort event to the signal. And now the abort event, handle abort here, you can see this is where we're actually doing the underlying clear timeout of the, of the timer. And that's all there is to it. So this function here acts as our lower level proxy to the native set timeout but uses a, a sort of inversion of control where we're injecting this dependency as part of the function invocation, the signal. And instead of this returning the timeout ID, we're using the signal as a pub sub mechanism to do that debouncing dance. And then our normal looking debounce dance, the timer, the abort, the resetting of the timer, that's all being done through the abort controller and the signal that's getting passed in. So. Uh, just a simple exploration. If all you want to do is debounce a set timeout call, this is definitely overkill. But the thing is, now that we have a way to cancel timers using an abort controller, we can start to think about, well, how do we uh, integrate that logic with other things that might be abortable, such as a fetch call, which means that maybe we can start to experiment with using a board controller to manage retry logic within a fetch handler. But that's fodder for another post.